Everything happens for a reason. How sick are you of hearing that? No matter what bad thing has happened, everything happens for a reason. And I know you don't want to believe it. So I'm going to tell you my story and how bad it was and the reason behind it and the good that came out of it. This is a hard story to tell. This is going to be a hard story to hear. So I'm going to give you a trigger warning. If you cannot stomach the topic of incest, turn it off right now. Because this video covers incest. And I'm not putting this in the label and I'm not putting this in the title, the description box, because I don't want anyone censoring this. In order to hear this message, you have to watch this video and watch it to the end. And I promise a good will come of it. And you will be thankful that you stuck it out and that you watched this story, okay? I was a victim of incest when I was a young, young child. Now there's a certain age when we are able to recall memory. All of my memories include this, which means I was younger the first time than what my memory would allow me to remember, what my conscious mind would allow me to remember. So basically, I was a toddler. And I know that's hard to hear. And you've got a little sick feeling in the bottom of your stomach right now, I know. I know. Because I do in the telling of it. And I survived. But of course I'm changed forever. I have no idea the person I would have been had this not happened to me. Because there is no me before this happened to me. You understand what I'm saying? It is my earliest childhood memory. And I was three years old at that time when I remember it. Okay. So you're asking, what good could have come of that? I'm a changed person. I didn't know, and I still have trouble with love don't know what that means. As a teenager, as a young woman, I broke a lot of hearts because I didn't know what that word meant. And I hurt people, good people. And I tended to glom towards the boys and men that hurt me. Because there was a part of me that thought I didn't deserve any better. I didn't know any better. I didn't understand that I had a choice in who I gave my body to. So I was very promiscuous. I didn't learn that lesson until my oldest daughter was in her 20s and she taught me that. It wasn't until I heard the words come out of her mouth that she wanted it to be special, that she wanted to choose who she allowed inside herself. And then something clicked. And I thought that makes perfect sense. But I didn't know that. Because no one had taught me that. 
and I certainly had not taught her. She taught me. So you're asking yourself, what good could have possibly come from such a horrific thing? And this is where the story gets good. Okay? What this did for me was it taught me how to spot a child molester. I could see the signs. I could see the look in the eye, the mannerisms. And I knew, I knew. And my daughter, my oldest daughter, was three years old, just the age I was at my earliest memory of it. And I was married to a very nice man, and we had two children, my oldest two daughters. And my oldest daughter was three. And his cousin came to visit to spend Christmas with us just out of the blue. We got a phone call. He was at the bus station. He was traveling. Could he spend the Christmas holiday with us? It was about three days before Christmas. My husband said, sure. Now this was a man I had never met before. And he showed up at the door and he seemed very nice. We had dinner and we all sat in the living room and he was playing with our children. And I watched him. And I saw how he looked at my daughter. And I saw how he played with my daughter. And how he spoke to her. And how he got her trust. And how he asked her for a kiss. And I knew. And Every part of my body was on fire, and I knew. And this was something I didn't know how to explain to my husband. This was a very small house, and I wasn't leaving him alone with my kids. So I pulled my husband into the kitchen, and as quietly as I could, I said, he cannot stay. And my husband looked shocked. What do you mean he can't stay? And I looked him dead in the eye and I whispered, watch him. Open your eyes. Really watch him. And my husband went back in and sat on the couch and he watched his cousin playing with our daughter. Not five minutes went by and he jumped up and he said, I'm sorry, this isn't gonna work. You can't stay, get your things. Where can I drop you? And he took that man to the bus stop and he left him there right before Christmas. Didn't know if he had anywhere to go and did not care if he had anywhere to go. He wasn't staying the night at our house. Now this was a Southern Baptist family no one said a word about him coming, about him not being allowed to stay. No one said a word. So I think he knew he was busted. He knew that we knew what he was doing or what he wanted to do. And he didn't mention it to the rest of the family because they never mentioned it to us. So I went through hell as a child. But as a mother, I saved my daughter. So everything happens for a reason. And if I had to go through that to save her that, I'd do it in a heartbeat any day. So when things get rough, and you know they do, you just think 
when someone says everything happens for a reason, you think someday I'll know that reason and I'll remember and I'll be okay.